All right, we'll go ahead and record. All right. All right, here we go. So we are gonna, like I mentioned, talk about woodpeckers today. So um, this is a group of animals and birds that I'm sure many of us hear or see, um, but maybe you don't know quite a lot about them or you're just here to learn more information about them. So we'll go ahead and talk about their adaptations today. We're gonna talk about some species that you can see here in Nebraska, but then I always like to mention some other species that aren't in Nebraska, because I know that we have a lot of people that join us from other states. And sometimes um, if you go on vacation or if you have traveled to a place and maybe have seen these animals before, or maybe you now know what you're seeing. So, all right. My name is Monica McCubrey. I'm the Wildlife Education Specialist with the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. Um, this, okay. Okay, a lot of things going on, sorry. Um, I'm with the Nebraska Game and Parks Commission. I'm the Wildlife Education Specialist. Um, I've been doing this for now 10 years. Um, so I do not believe myself an expert by any means. I just really love science. So if you have a question that I cannot answer, I promise I will find someone that can answer it for you and I will get back to you. So let's go ahead and get started about woodpeckers. Um, just to let everybody know, if you have questions, that's awesome. If you wanna use the chat, please feel free to, but just remember to keep it on topic. Um, if if not, we can have the um, right to remove you, but I'm sure that we will not have an issue today. And then, uh, like I mentioned, I really like science. I am by no means uh, say that I'm an expert in any of these topics. I do a ton of research every single week for them. Um, and there's still things that I don't know either. And I know there's people out there that um, know more than me. So if you have um, an idea or if you have a, I don't know if that's correct, I've heard this, please feel free to put it in the chat. I would love to know as well. And I still like to learn too, so. All right, so let's go ahead and get started about um, just kind of like the basics. What is a woodpecker? I know most of us, if we see one, we can probably say that's a woodpecker, but how do you know? What are the characteristics that all these animals share? So um, woodpecker, just kind of the basics. They're birds. Hopefully everyone that has joined today, um, you know that. Um, they are birds. So um, there's about 218 species worldwide, and they're in a special family of birds called the Pisidae family. So um, they are pretty much anywhere uh, except really Australia and New Guinea. So uh, the United States has about 23 species of woodpeckers. And so if you do your math, that means that there's a lot of other species out there that are not not even in the United States. So um, most of them that we see um, are going to be residents. Now that doesn't mean that there's all of them um, usually staying in a certain place. There's a lot of them that are migratory as well. Um, for instance, the ones that we see here in Nebraska that are migratory are going to be things like the yellow-bellied sapsucker and the flicker. You might have heard like the northern flicker, the yellow-shafted flicker. Um, those are what we're talking about. Um, these are arboreal birds. So thinking about the word arboreal, um, if you've heard of the word Arbor Day or the holiday that we celebrate here in Nebraska, that means tree. So when we talk about arboreal, we're talking about a tree living species. So these are animals that spend almost their entire life in the trees. Um, there are a few different woodpeckers and in, in when you um, break them apart, um, they forage differently or they get their food differently. So um, most of them, that's why I put most, not all, most of them spend a lot of their time in the trees, um, but there are certain ones that forage on the ground. Um, and we're going to be talking about those today as well. And then um, depending on when they're on the ground or on a tree, the way that they're on there, are they horizontal? Are they vertical? Are they upside down? Um, that also contributes to their characteristics and how they're grouped as well. All right, um, so woodpeckers, when you think about them, they peck on the wood. That's what they're known for. Um, they eat a lot of insects. Most people see them drumming on old trees or dead or decaying or dying trees um, to get those bugs out of there. Um, but they also do feed on other things. There's a lot of them that feed on fruits and berries. There are some even in the world that eat small vertebrates like lizards. Um, there's some that eat small mammals like mice. Um, sap suckers, you get the name sap sucker and you immediately think that they suck the sap out of the trees. Very similarly, they drill holes in the well um, of a tree, and then that basically attracts other animals and other insects, and then they come back and eat the sap, lick the sap up, and then eat the insects that are drawn to that sap as well. 
Um, when we talk about uh, when we hear them or when they're the loudest, um, we think of woodpeckers doing that drumming, what we call the, the pecking sound. Um, this is usually on wood because they're woodpeckers, um, but also sometimes you will hear them drumming on metal. Um, I remember the first time I was sitting in my house and I heard this like drilling sound on our eaves and our gutters. And I was like, my house is falling apart. <laughs> What's going on? Um, but I looked out, it was just a woodpecker. Usually this happens during the springtime. Um, this is males holding their territory or defining their territory. Um, some species that you will see are actually very territorial and they're very aggressive when they defend that territory. So that is oftentimes why you hear that drumming. Um, most of the times though, they are fairly silent. Um, they're not a very loud species or a very commonly um, vocal species, like when you think of like a chickadee or a robin or a cardinal. Um, they're very different compared to those other birds. And they're also not very social. There are a few that are or spend time in family groups. Um, but most of the time they're solitary or sometimes they will travel um, just to pairs together. All right, so technically when we talk about woodpeckers, most people don't think of the sap suckers and the flickers. Um, there's other things as well. So the whole woodpecker is kind of an umbrella term that pits a day family, but then there are also things called flickers, sap, suckle, sap suckers, Rhinex and piculate. So these are things that you might not have heard of. Um, we don't have some of these in the United States, um, but like I mentioned, we have about 218 species worldwide and only 23 of them can be found in North America. Uh, woodpecker is just a wide range of bird when we talk about it. So they could range from three to 23 inches in length. That's a huge diversity. Um, but overall, they do have sp some specific characteristics that make them similar to each other. That's how they're grouped together. Um, they usually, not always, but usually have a combination of red, white, and black. They're spotted, they're striped. Sometimes they will have yellow on them. The flickers, um, when you open their wings, you will see that they have red or yellow on them, depending on the species. But then another thing that woodpeckers are known for is their strong, straight beaks. Um, that's how they get their name. They peck on the wood using their beaks. They also have long, sticky tongues. Most of them have long, stiff tail feathers, which they use to prop up on the wood while they're drumming or drilling a nest hole or finding food. Um, and they also have these really neat feet called zygodactyl feet, which we'll talk a little bit um, more in depth here later. And then they nest in tree cavities most of the time. You don't usually see woodpeckers um, scrape nesting on the ground or anything like that. All right, so I wanted just to really quickly break these down for you so you know what a sapsucker is, what a flicker is, how do they compare and contrast. So in sapsucker world, there's only four of them, and they are all found here in North America. So you get the name sapsucker because you're a sapsucker. So you feed on the sap and the insects. Um, basically, they will drill holes in the tree um, and then let that sap kind of run out. And then oftentimes they will return to eat the bugs and the other animals that were drawn to that sap. So not only are they they helping themselves, but there's a lot of other animals out there too that want to eat that sap. Things like hummingbirds, even porcupines, um, and a lot of insects are drawn to that sweet sap from those trees. Um, all four species prefer warmer weather, so we do have one here in Nebraska, um, but it is a migrant. The yellow-bellied sapsucker is not one that is here all year round. Um, so just for you that are interested, I have those four species there on the bottom, the red-breasted, the red-naped, the Williamson, and then the yellow-bellied sapsucker, which is probably the most common. All right, so flickers, they're a little different and I am not a bird person by any means. I have to do a lot of extra research when I talk about birds. I'm a herp person or a reptile person, but um, for the longest time, I could not understand are flickers woodpeckers? Are they different? Are they in the same family or not? Um, yes, they are in the same family. They are under that umbrella term of a woodpecker. Um, so they're usually named because of their really pretty colors underneath their wings and their tails. Um, people think that they resemble that flickering flames when they fly. Um, but basically they are ground feeding woodpeckers. So this is where we get a little different in that foraging technique. So um, a lot of the times you will see flickers on the ground. Basically they flick their beaks in the uh, soil, in the leaf litter, and they're looking for insects. Um, so they have really strong, thick bills, which you can see in that picture there. And then they remove the insects from the ground. 
These are also um, migratory birds, so you will only see them certain times here in Nebraska. Um, and these actually spend more time horizontal on trees rather than vertically. So very similar to like um, a songbird is going to be sitting um, horizontal on a tree rather than vertically like your quintessential woodpecker. All right, so then you also have these like sparrow looking things. They're called rhinex. Um, they do not look like woodpeckers at all, um, but they look more like sparrows, but they're usually found more in open woodlands um, and brushlands. They're not here in the United States, um, but they are named after their habit of this like snake twisting neck thing that they do when they feel alarmed or threatened. So that's how they get their name, the rhinex. Uh, but these guys will also flick up ants from the ground um, and their trees. And and they have incredibly long tongues, which is, again, that quintessential woodpecker characteristic as well. These guys are also more likely to perch on a branch rather than upright on a trunk. So very similar to that flicker behavior rather than like a downy woodpecker or a hairy woodpecker. All right, and then you also have these things called piculates. Um, cute little birds, there's about 29 species worldwide and they're mostly found in the tropic area. So um, Africa, Asia, South America. Um, they're very small birds. They're the smallest in the woodpecker family and they have these short little stubby tails. Most of the time when you think of woodpeckers, they have those really long stiff feathers which they use to prop themselves up on the trees. Um, a lot of people feel like they're not true woodpeckers but scientifically they're in the same family. Um, so they're able to perch crosswise on branches. Um, these are one birds that um, oftentimes will reuse other nest cavities. There's a lot of woodpecker species that they will only um, build their own. They will excavate their own. These guys are known to use them, um, reuse them and recycle them. And then their bills are often shorter than that normal woodpecker or true woodpeckers. And they're less like dagger-like. They almost look like just a normal bird that you would see. All right, so that was kind of just a brief overview of the different kinds of woodpeckers and just kind of their like initially what is a woodpecker. So now we're going to get a little more into like the science behind those characteristics and those adaptations. Um, I'm going to really quick check the chat here. Um, someone said, I have flickers in the winter. Would these be different population than is here in the summer? Some, I and this is just my knowledge, I believe some do stick around um, depending on the climate and the winter, but there are some flickers that look very similar to other birds. And knowing me, it might be an identification issue, um, but that's not saying that yours is. So there are some birds that might stay here. Not every bird follows every single rule. There are some geese that migrate and some geese that stay. So it just kind of depends. Um, Someone asked, what's the difference between rhinex flickers? Hopefully we just kind of answer that. Um, they have just different foraging habits and different techniques, and then also where they're found in the world. And someone said they're a bit late, totally fine. Like I mentioned, this will be recorded. So if you wanted to go back and look at it, you certainly can as well. All right, so let's talk about the thing that makes a woodpecker a woodpecker, their beak and their skull. So um, about 12,000 times a day, they will drill or they will search for food. They'll try to find and they'll make a nest or they'll communicate with those other birds. So if you can imagine um, 12,000 times a day, you're pecking on something, that's quite a bit. So you have to have a skull and a beak that are made to do that. Um, for the longest time, people have been saying, um, and even I thought this too, that they have this like shock absorbing mechanism in their brain. It was very recently disproven. Um, so they do not have that. If they did, let's say that they did, and it was a hypothetical thing, um, that would mean that the mechanism, that shock absorbing mechanism would hamper the bird's pecking ability. So they would need to exert even more energy to do that to reach their meals. So there was a scientist that said, I don't think this is correct. I wanna test this theory. So it's a good thing that they did because they found that they just proved it, it wasn't true. Um, so this research team basically did all these studies. They watched videos, they interacted with real woodpeckers. They, they took um, measurements and samples and they did all this stuff and they found that there was no difference in the movement patterns between the beak and the brain. So rather than having like, like shock absorbing mechanism, it their beak almost acts like a stiff hammer. Um, so basically the, the reason I tell you that is because a lot of people ask, 
well, how do woodpeckers drill and drum on holes and not get a concussion or not hurt their brain? Um, so basically, um, all of this has to deal with the size of their brain. And I'm going to be honest with you, their brain is small and petite, and that is the reason they don't get concussions every time. So um, basically, if you look at, at a woodpecker brain, the average size of a woodpecker brain and the average size of a person brain, they're 700 times smaller than a human, 700 times smaller. So think about that, like how small the woodpecker brain is. Um, so like I mentioned, if they wanted to actually concuss themselves, they would need to hit the wood twice as fast as they actually do to get a concussion. So how do they do this? So to avoid concussions, the whole idea is that they have small brains. I'm not saying they're stupid, but the size and the weight of their brain is small compared to other animals. So that is able to handle that shock um, and not be an absorber, but it handles it better. And they basically, they can bounce back. Um, so if you ever think about a fly um, that hits the window and you're like, oh my gosh, how did that fly just hit the window and then just bounce back? It's the same mechanism. So Fly's brains are very small and there's not a lot of room for whiplash um, when this happens. And so basically the bird does not get a concussion and the fly doesn't die by hitting that window so hard. Um, so with each peck of the head, um, when, it, when it pecks, the brain and the head move forward together at the same time. So there's no like whiplash going back and forth. Um, if humans did this, we would definitely have a concussion because there's a lot of space in our brain and um, we have a larger brain. Um, so woodpeckers basically have a smaller and lighter brain, which helps contribute to that pressure um, upon each peck. So if a woodpecker actually wanted to have a concussion, it would need to go twice as fast um, hitting the tree, and then it would have to hit something four times the strength of a normal bark on a tree. So it could happen, but it's very, very, very unlikely. Their brain is literally, and their skull is built to not have this happen. All right, so also something is their brain is made, or their skull, sorry, is made out of the kind of a spongier um, type of bone. So as the bird hammers, it gives kind of like that seat belt or that extra padding on there. Um, the tongue also is a padding mechanism as well. They have super thick muscles in their neck because if you're going to be drumming and drilling the whole time, you have to have those strong muscles. And like I mentioned, the brain fits extremely tight into the skull, so there's not a lot of room for movement. Um, if these birds also have a third inner eyelid so that when they hit things, their eyeballs do not pop out. Like, how cool is that? So they would have to, um, they have to have that mechanism. Otherwise, their eyeballs would literally pop out because they're hitting the, the beak or their, um, the window, the eave, the bark so hard. All right, they also have a special bone called the hyoid bone. Um, so it again wraps around and it again acts like a seat belt for the brain. Um, there's no rotational movement, it's just lineal. So it does not rotate in a circle, it's more like a line. Um, so when they strike, um, that helps them as well. Um, they also have a beak. So the beak and the skull kind of go kind of hand in hand here. We talked about the skull. Let's talk about the beak now. Um, so the beak is um, three layers of keratin. Um, you might have heard that word before. It's the same stuff, the protein that's made out of your hair, your skin, your nails, that kind of stuff. Um, so they have three layers. There's an exterior layer, which um, kind of looks like overlapping scales. There's the middle kind of spongy foamy layer of their beak. And then the very, very inner layer is composed of things like collagen fibers, which make it a little softer. Um, so the harder value, um, so basically the inner layer is um, higher than the exterior layer. So um, that is how the bird is able to drum and not break its beak. All right, so the feet are another huge thing about a woodpecker that make them special and unique. Um, if you look at their beak, it makes an X. Uh, sorry, if you look at their feet, it makes an X when you look at their toes. Um, so these are called zygodactyl feet. Um, so basically they have two pairs on each toe, um, two pairs of toes on each foot, one pair face, faces forward, one pair faces backwards. Um, 
And this is great for birds that spend a lot of time um, kind of hopping up and down across tree trunks. If you're familiar with the nuthatch, um, nuthatches also have this. They have a special ability of like going down face first, um, which is a little bit different than a woodpecker. They just don't really do that, but they have the same type of feet. This is one of the, I think it's the second or third most common type of foot pattern in birds. So it's fairly common in a lot of animals. Owls also have this, um, but basically it helps cling to bark while the woodpecker pecks. So if you think about it, they have these cool feet that hold on and their tail props them up. Um, with all that, they're able to drum really hard on a tree. Um, they're also, their digits, um, so their individual fingers there, are controlled by the super complex system of muscles as well. There's flexor muscles, um, which are responsible basically for the grasping movement. Um, and they're found on the ventral side of the foot. And then you also have the extender muscles, which is for releasing. So instead of grabbing, it releases and they're found on the dorsal side of the foot. So very, very cool mechanisms in the feet, the muscles, the way that their toes are placed, very interesting. All right, tongue. So this is another, again, quintessential thing of a woodpecker. Um, tongues are a little different in different species um, in this Pisidae family, but um, like all birds, woodpeckers have tongues. Um, theirs are just a little bit larger. Uh, different species, like I mentioned, also use their tongues in different ways. It just depends on how they forage and what they're eating. Um, so there are animals that have extremely long tongues. Um, basically, it helps reach into those crevices um, to get those larvae and insects. If you're drilling a hole, you can't have a tiny tongue. You need it to extend far beyond your beak to reach what's in the hole. Um, and then also they have a small head to tongue ratio. So um, people, I think it is if we had the same length of a tongue as a woodpecker, ours would be two feet long. Um, clearly ours is not that long, um, but just thinking about that in comparison to a woodpecker. Um, they also are supported, these tongues, by that hyoid bone, which is the same that supported the skull so they don't get a concussion. Um, so basically that hyoid bone is shaped like a horseshoe structure and it's in our um, bodies as well. It's underneath our jaw and basically it gives the muscles in our tongue um, and the floor of our mouth something to grab onto so our tongue isn't just floating around. Um, also that... Um, you might have heard the it wraps around like a fruit roll up. Um, it curls around. It's very true, actually a little bit different, um, but it wrapped around um, the hyoid bone. It goes through the nostrils and into the bird's um, upper beak. So it splits into a V between the eyes, um, this, this bone here, um, passing over the top and around the neck before it meets up again. Um, so I can read all this to you or I could just show you what this looks like. So this is super cool. Um, at, like, when I talk to kids about woodpeckers, I always say it looks like a fruit roll up because one, my daughter loves fruit roll-ups and she loves to move it around um, in a circle, but it kind of looks like that. So it wraps all the way around and it extends out and then they push it back in. So that tongue is something that also helps prevent that damage and that extra padding layer when they're um, uh, drumming on something like a tree or a window. So the idea is that that tongue extends out and then it comes back in when they're not using it. And if you look at that bird's eye view, you notice that it goes through one of those nostrils right here. Um, that's because it is so long, it needs to have something to grab onto up here. And then I mentioned also that it breaks into a V. Their tongue is singular, it's not like a snake, um, but right here you can notice that it splits in two um, just because then it has more something to grab onto when it goes into that nostril. Very interesting. All right, so their tongue, um, oftentimes it can be about as one third as long as their total body. Um, that includes the part that stays anchored into the head and also the part that sticks out past the beak. And like I mentioned, if our tongues were the same length of a woodpecker, ours would be around two feet long. Um, so depending on the different species of woodpeckers and the different types, they're gonna use their tongues differently. So flickers, for instance, they have extra long tongues. They are flicking things up and they need to grab those. Sap suck have little brush tipped tongues, which they lap up that um, uh, sap using a special capillary action. So if you've ever spilled something and used a paper towel, um, you put it on there and then the paper towel water just spreads. It's a very similar thing on how um, their tongue, the sap sucker tongue works and that paper towel in the water. 
And then you also have your pileated woodpeckers, which have really short tongues. Um, pileated woodpeckers are fairly large, but they have very short barb tipped tongues. And this is specialized for getting prey from bark crevices. And then um, woodpecker's tongue would not be complete if they didn't have large salivary glands and they were super sticky. So what's the point in having a long tongue and reaching that if you can't physically get it out? Well, they're sticky um, so that they can grab those animals out of those um, crevices. All right, and then you also have their tail feathers. So woodpeckers have the long, stiff tail. Most of them do. It's just that extra prop and that support um, for when they're drumming or hollowing out the trees. Um, and then also most woodpeckers have um, colors like the red, the white, the black, um, and that helps them to disguise themselves. If they're climbing up a tree, it's supposed to break up their image so that if a predator comes, it's harder to see them. And then they also have these special tufts um, growing over their nostrils, as you can kind of see between the beak and the eye right here, this little tuft of hair, um, that prevents debris from getting into their nostrils when they're drumming. So very cool technique there as well, adaptation as well. And then like other birds, um, they have way thicker skin because they're having that constant contact with the rough bark over time. It has just adapted to becoming thicker than other types of birds like a robin or a blue jay. All right, and then this drumming thing. Why are they doing this? Um, like I mentioned earlier, they're really doing this because they're creating holes in trees to get their food. Um, but they will make more noise in the spring just to establish that mating territory and to find a mate. Um, but they will also communicate to each other um, in this uh, unique form of movement or that pounding noise, we call it drumming. Um, and then also, uh, depending on the type of species, they will use it to create a nest cavity or if you're a different kind of species that does not excavate your own, you will be one that reuses somebody else's. Um, most common trees that woodpeckers are gonna find them in are things like pine, spruce, birch, fr fruit trees, and also sweet gums. Um, and then also it, basically any dead or de de dying or decaying tree with that really soft wood, you're gonna find a woodpecker. All right, so that was like a really in-depth look at the different types of adaptations, like the physical adaptations that they have. Um, so now I just wanna talk a little bit about some woodpeckers that you would commonly see here in Nebraska, and then just a few um, species that you might see worldwide as well. I'm gonna quick check the chat. Um, someone asked, could woodpeckers stay upside down if they tried? <clears throat> um, I would think for a short time, but I my guess is they just don't have quite those specified adaptations as like a nut hatch would have. They're really the ones that I think of that go down a tree, um, but I'm not exactly sure on that. Um, why do nearly all species of woodpeckers have at least some red on their heads? That's a very good question. Um, to me, I believe that the red would stick out more than like brown or something, um, but that's kind of just like the quintessential woodpecker colors. Um, that's a really good question. I am not 100% sure on that one. It's a really good question. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about specific uh, species that we might see here in Nebraska. Um, my favorite is the downy woodpecker just because they're very small. Um, these often get confused with hairy woodpeckers. They're very similar in appearance. Um, hairy woodpeckers are gonna be a little bit larger. And if you look at the size of their beak, people always say that it's like longer than a downy, but like subjectively thinking how much is longer. Um, so I usually look at the size of their head. So a downy woodpecker, if you look at the beak, it's about half the length of their head. And a hairy woodpecker, their beak is about the same length as their head. So I know they don't usually stick around long enough for you to see that, but if you saw them in comparison in a picture, that's a way that you can tell. This is the smallest of one of all the woodpeckers in Nebraska and North America. They're found in the state all year round. So um, get your bird feeders ready because you are able to see this bird. Um, like I mentioned, they're very common at your bird feeders. They love suet, peanuts, mixed seeds, um, and then those black sunflower seeds as well. Um, these are birds because they're smaller. They do not intimidate other birds. So they're more likely to join different flocks of things like chickadees or nuthatches. So you might see them very similarly together. Um, and like I mentioned, they're very similarly looking to a, a hairy woodpecker. Uh, these guys though, being smaller, they have the cool adaptation of getting all the food that other woodpeckers miss. So they often will follow other woodpeckers around, wait for them to do all the hard drumming and the stuff that they can't reach, they go off and find something else. And the downy will come in and pick up basically what they left. Um, and then males and females will actually divide the work in foraging. So they will have different female and male roles when they are looking for food. 
And then you have the hairy. So really quickly, just looking at this one. And if I flip back, they look very similar to each other. It's very hard to tell. Same pattern on the head, same red, black, and white. Um, same almost bill size by just looking at them. But again, downies are a little bit smaller. Hairies are a little bit bigger. Um, these are pretty powerful birds. Um, they forage along the trunks and usually the main branches of really large trees. Um, they pretty much can be found anywhere from sea level to high elevation in the mountains. They spend more time on um, smaller branches, sorry, downy spend more time on smaller branches. These guys, the hairies, are usually more time on the trunks of the trees. So that could be a way for you to identify them as well. Um, these guys will also follow, away, um, follow specifically pileated woodpeckers around, which we do have in Nebraska. They're kind of rare along the Missouri corridor, but you can see them. Um, but they will also take the insects that the pileated miss. 75% um, of this guy's diet is going to be bark beetles, ants, moth pupa in the cocoons. And um, a lot of people actually contribute um, the hairy woodpecker to helping control moth outbreaks and things like orchards or apple orchards um, or fruit orchards in general. They eat a lot of insects, so we like them. All right, then you got the red-bellied woodpecker, um, which I can confuse because they have a red head, not really a red belly, but then there's the red-headed woodpecker. So, um, so these guys are pretty much found across forests, woodlands, mostly in the Eastern United States. Um, they eat things like insects, spiders, but they will also eat some plant material, pine cones, acorns, nuts. These are also ones that will take a lizard. They're a little bit larger and even nestling birds and small minnow. So don't put it past um, a woodpecker. And then also um, they will nest in dead limbs of live trees. So not necessarily the whole tree is dead. It's just the um, limbs on them or the branches. These guys also will stick to the main branches and trunks of the trees. So very similar foraging technique to that hairy woodpecker. And then like you can mention, you can see in this picture here, they have that classic woodpecker posture. Their tail is propped up against the tree. If you look, this is a great way to see their feet. You have the two in front and then the two in back, and they are just gripping that trunk so that they don't fall. And these guys are kind of pushy, um, especially at bird feeders. If you notice, they will push other birds aside. It just seems that studies show the one bird that they really don't mess with is blue jays. They'll push all the other birds aside, but blue jays, they kind of just leave alone. All right, and then you have the wet red-headed woodpecker. Um, a lot of people call these guys a flying checkerboard just because of their um, colors and then their wings underneath. These guys, they don't necessarily forage or drum on trees as often. They catch insects in the air, which is different. Um, they also eat lots of acorns and beech nuts. Um, when you see photos of um, acorns that have been like shoved in trees or those cached areas, this is one of only four species in the world that is known to hide away food and crevices for later. So kind of cool, the red-headed woodpecker. Um, they're also kind of savage when they talk about different grasshoppers and insects. Um, they will take a grasshopper, leave it alive or a cricket, and they'll store it somewhere in a crevice so tight that the grasshopper cannot get out. And then when it finally dies, it will go back and eat it. So kind of similar to the loggerhead shrike, well, they'll stick something in a crevice. Loggerhead shrikes are usually ones that like poke something on a barbed wire. These guys stuff it in a crevice until it can't escape and it dies, and then they will go back for it later. Um, we talked at the very beginning about animals that are very defending of their territory. This is the one, red-headed woodpeckers, especially fierce defenders of their territory and their eggs, and they're very easily to quick pick fights with other birds. Um, and then usually they'll stay up in an area for a long period of time. Um, most of the times, the times that I've seen them have been on telephone poles. So, all right. And then you have the northern flicker. They're found in woodlands, forest edges. They will also eat fruits and seeds. Um, they have the longest tongues in the woodpecker family. So if they extend it all the way out past their beak, it extends two inches out past their bill um, to get their food. These guys will usually excavate their own holes, um, but they will also reuse cavities as well. Um, one kind of neat characteristic about these two in the spring for mating territories um, and for females, they will participate in something called a fencing duel with other birds and other beaks too. And so they'll use their beaks just like um, someone using a sword and then the loser does not get that territory or that mate and the winner does. So um, there's a couple different ones. There's yellow shafted, red shafted. Um, sometimes people, they will hybrate 
hybrid eyes together. Um, so when you see their wings, um, they'll be yellow, they'll be red, there might be a um, combination of those two, um, but there are technically subspecies, the yellow red and yellow shafted and the red shafted as well. All right, then you have the sap sucker. So these guys are the ones with that cool tongue that has like a bristle on it and they will lap up the sap from the wells. Um, they're a little bit larger, about seven to eight inches, and they're mostly found in the eastern and central part of Nebraska, but they are ones that migrate. So you will only see them in the spring and fall. So instead of drilling for bugs, they're looking for the sweet sap. So spiders, ants, other insects that are drawn to that, and then they come back and eat those, but then also lick up the sap. Um, they are mostly found in the forest and woody areas. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, these guys are great because they drill the holes and the wells and then the sap will come out. They're also giving a chance for other animals to feed on that sap. So things like bats, things like hummingbirds, things like porcupines, a lot of insects will eat that as well. So they're creating a lot of good resources for lots of different animals as well. All right, so we're gonna keep moving along here and then I will check the chat at the very end. I only have a few more slides, but let's go ahead and talk really quickly about some different woodpeckers in the world. So I put this guy in the world category. They are in Nebraska, but again, they're rare-ish. They're found like on the Missouri Eastern side of Nebraska. Um, they've been seen at like Fontenelle Forest and I think SRAM as well, um, but they are a little bit more rare compared to the other woodpeckers in Nebraska, but they like very mature deciduous trees. Um, if you're familiar with Woody the woodpecker, this was the species that they based that character off of. Um, their my main primary food is carpenter ants. They love those wood boring beetles, termites, caterpillars, but they will also eat things like fruits and nuts. And occasionally, if in an area that you would see them more regularly, they would be visiting backyard bird feeders. Um, one of the things that we um, kind of always hear about species is how much their numbers have declined, especially bird species. Um, these are ones from at least 1966 to 2019. Their population has increased, which is kind of neat. Um, a lot of times during the, the 60s, people were cutting down the trees, but then they realized that wasn't a good idea. So they started planting more trees. So now that those populations have grown in the trees in the forest, we're seeing more of those pileated woodpeckers. Um, for their nest cavities, usually the male does most of the work. The female will come in kind of close to completion and she will get in the hole and then peck around inside to kind of chisel it out. Um, so the male will make that initial hole and then the female will kind of finish it up. But they are um, one of those birds that are really monogamous and they hold very large territories as well. All right. This one's probably extinct. I'm not 100% sure. I've never seen one, but I've heard that we probably don't have any more of them, but they were very popular at one point. Um, the largest woodpecker of north of Mexico and the third largest in the world. The ivory-billed woodpecker was a species at one point um, found kind of in the southeastern United States and even into Cuba. Um, basically, the destruction of the habitat is what possibly drove them away. Um, it was a huge decline in the 1800s. And then people thought that they were extinct long time, long time. 2004, there's a bunch of sightings in Arkansas. Haven't seen them since. So we're pretty sure that we don't have any more. But again, new species and new um, sightings come up all the time. So I put it in here just because it's interesting. Um, they're fairly large woodpeckers. The last sighting in Cuba was 1986, and like I mentioned, we do believe they're extinct, but again, I'm, I've just never seen one, but that doesn't mean they're around, not around. All right, we usually think of birds and trees, woodpeckers and trees especially. Well, here's a woodpecker in a saguaro. So these guys are called Gila woodpeckers. If you're familiar with like a Gila monster, um, Gila, Gila, whatever you want to call it, um, this is the woodpecker. Very similar looking to like a flicker, um, but these guys will dig out holes in those saguaro cactuses. So eating insects, berries, the fruits from the cactus. Um, these guys also have like prime real estate. So what they will do is they will drill a hole into the cactus and then they actually leave for a few months and let it dry and then they will come back and roost in there. So they're very loud birds. They're fairly common in this area um, of the southwest in Mexico um, and they're very aggressive during the breeding season. Um, something that's neat about these birds also is that they will, um, once they drill that hole, they will not use it again but other animals can use those. There's a lot of animals that want to nest in a saguaro. So they are creating lots of homes for other different types of species as well. 
All right. And then you have this cool guy called the greater flame back, or sometimes people call them the greater golden back woodpecker. Same thing. Um, they're mostly found in the Northern India area, all the way from Southern China into Borneo. Um, they're very large woodpeckers and they have this cool red crest that they can move up and down. Um, the colors wide ranging, but it is fairly easy to tell a male from a female. So they have that very high sexual dimorphism. So where the male and the female look different from each other, other. Um, so rather than open, um, rather usually founding in like an open forest area instead of a dense forest area, but these guys will also inhabit mangrove forests. So, um, and they mainly feed like on small invertebrates, which is different, not a lot of insects, but small invertebrates. And then also they will drink nectar as well. All right, and this guy does not look like a woodpecker at all. It looks like a sparrow, but it's called the cardinal woodpecker. Fairly common resident um, in sub-Saharan Africa, basically ranging all the way up to like Namibia coastline. Um, these guys are fairly common. They're very loud. They're easy to identify, but these guys usually are in small family groups or they may even join other mixed flocks as well, which is kind of weird for woodpeckers because most of the time they're solitary. Um, but these guys will forage lately in the lower stories of the trees, um, but they're mostly insectivores. They don't really drink any sap or anything like that. The male and female have that again, that sexual dimorphism. They're very different looking. So the male will have a red hide crown and a nape like on your neck. And then a female has a dark hind crown and a black neck. So um, you can kind of tell female from male versus that way. And I think that was my last one. Yes, so that was my last slide for woodpeckers. Um, but if you liked this and you wanna come back, we're doing five more in the next five weeks. Um, so next week, we're gonna be talking about keystone species. And if you don't know what a keystone species is, you can find out. You have to join us next week from three to four. But things like bison, alligators, which we might talk a little bit about, but we don't have in Nebraska. And then also things like prairie dogs and beavers. So animals that help other animals um, in their environment or their ecosystem. And then we're going to be talking about prairie chickens, darters and minnows, dragonflies, and then ungulates to kind of finish off our winter series. Um, so please join us. Um, the email that everyone gets upon registering tomorrow, um, I will send the link out to register for the next one along with this information as well. And then if you like this and you want more, if you've never joined one of our programs before, we hope that you liked it and got some really good information on woodpeckers. Like I mentioned, I recorded all of these and I will be putting them on YouTube. We have a special Nebraska Game and Parks Education YouTube channel and we have our own science of playlist. So I've put all from the last two years. So if you're like, gosh, I really wish you do a science of fungi. I already did one. It's on there. You can go watch it. So there's lots of different things that you can do. We also have an education Facebook page, um, which you might have seen this on social media. We have an Instagram page with kind of fun facts and resources. And then we also have our main Nebraska Wildlife Education website as well. We have free downloadable activities and just kind of some good educator information and some PowerPoints and some scavenger hunts and that kind of stuff. All right, so thanks everyone for joining me. I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, there's quite a few comments, I think. Um, let's see, and, and thank you again for sticking around. Like I mentioned, I will be sending out an evaluation tomorrow as well, like a SurveyMonkey link. If you fill out our evaluation, you will get some swag. We will send you um, some cool science of stickers as well. So um, please fill it out. Help us um, make our virtual programs better. And um, we can accommodate you any way that we can. And then we will be um, seeing you all next week at 3 to 4 p.m. Central Standard Time talking about keystone species. So um, let's see. Someone. Okay, here we go. Lots of comments. Um, what do woodpeckers feed their young? Um, very similar. They feed them insects. They will feed them things like small little larvae and beetles, um, that kind of thing. Um, someone said they got to release one of these at wood, uh, woodpecker at Ponca. Very cool. It had to peck me a bunch before flying away. Yes. Um, I've heard birds are not very nice sometimes. So it's usually the ones you don't expect is what I've heard. Um, someone said they saw one of the Christmas bird count. Very cool. Um, do migrating woodpeckers migrate in flocks or fly solo? Ooh, good question. Um, I want to say that mostly since they're solitary, they will migrate solo, but, um, there might be some that travel in pairs. So that's a really good question. Not a hundred percent sure. 
Um, still trying to find a pileated. Yes, I hear you. Um, put those suet feeders out. Absolutely. If you want to see those woodpecker, like the downy and the hairy, um, the redheaded, those kind of things, put your suet feeders out. They will be there. Um, anything about ancient woodpeckers or how they evolved? I looked a little on that and it was kind of iffy. Um, there was not really a good way that I found on how they evolved, but um, that's a good question, Holly. I usually do try to put that stuff in there because I think it's interesting. So I'm not really sure. I had a very hard time finding information on that. No one really seems to know. So <laughs> um, habitat destruction, very cool information. Thank you. Thank you. Making sure I don't miss any questions here. Um, how cool would it be if there was an ivory billed woodpecker spotted again? I agree, Anne. I would love to see one as well. Maybe Nebraska. Like we'll be in the thing that says 2023 was spotted in Nebraska. But um, thank you very much. I'm glad someone got a um, suet feeder. I appreciate it. So awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Like I mentioned, I recorded this. I'll send you an email tomorrow. Tomorrow, Everyone that registered um, will get some resources, some things that we talked about today. Um, and if you, and we'll get the recording of this and then the link to the survey monkey. And again, if you fill out that survey monkey, we really appreciate it. Um, we want to make our virtual learning series better. Um, and if there's a way that we can change it, please let us know. And then you will get some stickers. If you fill out our thing, we'll send you one. So thank you, everyone and hopefully we will see you next week for Keystone Species. So thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your day and we'll see you later. Bye.